Lance, why don't you stay on for a minute with me? Yes, I will. All right, great. All right, so Lance, what'd you think? Well, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I guess a couple of things strike me. I mean, you made it clear that you don't emphasize grammar at all. So um, I've noticed that you don't uh, also slow down your speech at all. It's, um, it's all just very natural. It's, it's not like you're, you're trying to you know, slow down the student's speech and emphasize, uh, you know, certain portions of a sentence, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, give me one second before I, I forget my train of thought, just, just so if you didn't see this. So after the class, I'm always sure to come in and mark my attendance sheet, right? So Claudia was here and on time. I put a P next in, in the attendance sheet next to her name. Yeah. Rafael is my other student. He didn't show up to class and he didn't tell me. So he gets the red A okay. for absent, right? Uh, and then I make sure to put the, the notes of where we finished and anything else important to me for my next class, okay? Where does that go, the notes? Just down here in this tab, right? So you can see where it says finish lesson six. Right. Okay. You can click on that right there and it'll open a box where you can... Yeah, you would just type in, this is just like uh, Excel, right? So I can type, I can click on a box and say, I lands. Oh, okay. Type in whatever you want to there. David, what did you say the name of this Google program is? It's Google what? So I use Google Drive. Google Drive, okay. Yeah. Um, that's just how I do it, right? It's, it's going to be ultimately up to you to do it however you want to do it. Uh, are you familiar with uh, Excel? Uh, not really. I um I, kind of strangely enough, coincidentally enough, I uh, recently bought a, uh, a program that's going to teach me how to use Excel. So I'll hop right into that. Okay. Well, this is pretty straightforward. Um, if you just go to, I think you have a, a Google account, right? I do. Right. So if you're in your email, right? So like if I go over here to my email account, um, if you come up here, uh to the top right do you see these little boxes here yes right so it's just like it's got it's a three by three little circle with dots in it so you can click on that and then you, you see that'll pop up with your calendar gmail and drive okay so you can click here on drive and then this is it's it's nice it has uh you can create a Word doc, you can create a sheet, which is like uh, like Excel, right? So that's what I use uh, to manage my classes. The slides would be like a PowerPoint, I guess. Yeah, you can. I don't like I don't like their slides just because it's limited in, in capability. So I run my lessons off of a PowerPoint, which you just saw. All right. So uh, there's another uh, point that I noticed uh, during your lesson. You uh, don't do very much correction of the student. If the student uh, is mispronouncing a word, you don't tend to stop her and you know, emphasize correct pronunciation. Yeah, there's. Uh, it depends, right? It depends on because you have to understand what the what the purpose of the activity is, right? Uh, so, for example, there we were just working on the past tense of the verb be. So my focus there, she gets the past tense right. Whatever else she says, I'm not too, too concerned with the pronunciation because the, the purpose of the activity is focusing on the past tense of the verb be, right? Um, correction is, it's an art. There's, there's an art to correcting students. Uh, you want to correct students where it matters. Uh, if, if it will lead, if, if a student says something that is not comprehensible, that's where you want to correct them. Right. But pronunciation, uh, comes over a lot of time. And also the older one is the less likely they're able to perf perfect the pronunciation. Right. Basically after you're 16 years old, 
your face is fully developed, your mouth and your muscles and your tongue and all that stuff is fully developed. So perfecting an accent after the age of 16 is incredibly hard to do. And there's a physiological reason for that. So I'm not 100% concerned with pronunciation. I have certain pronunciation activities that we do throughout the class, you know, where the goal is to help people improve their accent, improve their pronunciation. But, but, but one thing you have to understand is when working with adults, uh, perfecting pronunciation is almost impossible. So I'm, I'm not very concerned with that in most of my classes. Um, the effective conversation teacher, right? Because there are different styles of teaching. What I do is conversational. So I'm 100% focused on uh, building my students' confidence up while they're speaking, getting them to develop their listening comprehension and have that open exchange of ideas and information, right? So if I'm constantly correcting them, no, that's not how you say that. No, that's not how you say that. No, that's not how you say it. It's going to reduce their confidence. It will make them feel bad. Okay, sure. And you have to understand when working with adults, especially, there's a balance that you have to carry when it comes to correcting somebody versus building up their confidence, right? You tend to conflate um, accent, you know, basically you know, more of a native accent with accuracy of pronunciation. You, you consider really accurate pronunciation to be more of an accent issue. I mean, it's gonna be hard, right? It's, it's, it's next to impossible to help somebody perfect an accent. Okay. So I don't get hung up, too hung up on it. I, I have pronunciation activities sprinkled throughout each course. Okay, so, so I, yeah, I get you, you kind of separate out, you know, pronunciation is a separate activity. And, yeah, right. so like if we were to go through, So just for example, right? Like to drive the point home here. Here, the purpose of this activity is the verb be in the past tense, right? So getting Claudia to say these the right way. I'm not concerned with the pronunciation of anything else other than this, these words right here, right? Does that make sense? Sure, sure. So, David, um, one thing that I noticed as Claudia was speaking, what about in the case where the the word that she speaks during the activity actually is a different word? So does that make sense? I mean, what if what if uh, if she pronounces "were" as "where," which is a completely different word? Well, that's where you need to do the correction. That's okay. exactly what I'm telling you to do. All right. right? Okay. I am concerned with this word. This is the only word that's that's right. So this this particular where were right. right. If you were to pronounce that as where, then we would have to correct it. Okay. Right. Right. right? Uh, you know, on these types of activities, right? This is really just to you know we're focusing more like so. There's a difference between fluency and accuracy. You already mentioned the word accuracy, which is a really important thing, right? So as a conversational instructor, I'm more concerned with fluency than I am accuracy. Accuracy comes over time, but fluency, that it gets back to that confidence thing. I'm really concerned with the confidence of my students, right? Sense, yes. So if I if I say who's the best athlete in the world, just as long as I can understand her answer, I'm probably not going to correct anything, right? If she says a word that I can't understand, then I have to correct it, right? But but for the most part, you know, that's in a in a reading activity. Here's where I might coach people a little bit on the conversation, right? Like if she were to say gorgeous is gorgeous. <laughs> you know, then yeah, I yeah. think it would be important to say, "Ooh, gorgeous!" Right? 
But for the most part, I try to do minimal corrections because, um, you know, a, a, according to the theory that's out there, people just have to get exposed to the language more and have to listen to it more. And, and everything else will fall into place over time. Um, a lot of studies have, have shown that when working with second language students, you know, people are very, very self-conscious, right? And, and so again, you know, it's, it's about managing that balance between accuracy while, while at the same time trying to boost their confidence. So oh, what's that? I'm sorry, the big issue with you know, second or, or third language acquisition is, is people are afraid to make mistakes. Right. And so if you're, you know, you, you, you certainly want to correct people, right? But I, I would say the, the best thing to keep in mind when you're correcting is exactly what you're correcting, right? What, what is the purpose of the activity? You know, in any given activity here, So here we've got an activity where we're working on comparatives and superlatives, right? Um, so if she mispronounced one of these, you have to correct her, right? Here we've got a, uh, now a, a speaking conversation where I'm, li I'm listening for the accuracy of the comparative or the superlative, right? So that's basically the only thing that I would correct. If she makes a mistake on something else, I'm more than likely not going to correct it. Because again, the purposes of this activity is to build somebody's confidence up with this new, and this is a grammar thing, right? I just don't tell them that, that it's grammar, but um, I'm trying to build their confidence up with this, right? Uh, so what's, what's the purpose? You know, The purpose of this activity is review. Uh, the purpose of this activity is more towards fluency than anything else. Accuracy with comparative and superlatives, fluency with everything else, right? Now we're, we're introducing this new, you know, structure, which is very confusing for Spanish speakers. They tend to look at the word like and they think we're saying, que le gusta, what does she like? So you saw at one point I had to kind of stop and say, hold on now, I'm not saying what does she like, I'm saying what is she like, right? And if you noticed, I maybe spoke, what, five Spanish words throughout this entire class, right? Very minimal use of, of the Spanish language, except in this situation, because I know how confusing that is, it's very easy for me just to say, here I'm not saying que le gusta, I'm saying como es, right? And instantly the person gets it, right? So in a situation like this, this is an intermediate class. Um, Claudia has been studying with me since December. So she hasn't been studying with me very long. She started in the very first level. So- She started not, not really speaking English at all. Right. Okay. So you can kind of see the power of this program. You, you can see how much she speaks in a very yeah, short I, amount of time. I'm pretty, yeah. So that's three months, basically, a little over three months. That's, uh, that's pretty yeah. impressive, David, I have to say. That's my claim to fame. I get people speaking in three months. Uh, that's, that's my claim, right? doesn't work for everybody. It works for most people, though. You know, yeah. The students have to do their work. The students have to listen to me and follow my advice, you know? Sure, sure. But uh, basically, if students are doing their part, I've got a program here that's going to get people speaking the language in three months or less, right? Now, Claudia and Rafael, who's the other student in this class, they've decided they want to make it perfect, right? Okay. Most of my students get what they need in the first three months. Uh, and then, you know, they may or may not continue. But you do, I also get a lot of students that it's actually most, I should say, uh, the average length of time is about two years. A lot of my students love it. When they, when they get into this program, they see how fun it is and how it gives them real results. They stick with me for a while. So, Wow. So you have a lot who actually stay with you for two years. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And at one point we had, we had a group of five students that started from the very first lesson 
of the very first level and they went all the way through to the end. It took them about five years, but they stayed the entire five years with us and they wanted to stay longer. They, they requested that we create more materials for them where we had to say, guys, you speak English perfectly. Like you don't, you don't actually need to keep studying it at this point. So, so does, there, does there tend to be sort of a common objective among most students? Um, so in terms of the students I typically work with, my students, in, in terms of objectives, one is they want to learn how to speak the language conversationally, right? Two is they want to learn the language for work. Work is the, the primary motivator. Almost all of my students uh, are working and see that learning in, in this situation, learning English can help them do their jobs better, can make their jobs easier, can help them make more money. Claudia is, an, is a business owner. The woman that was just in this class with us, she owns one of the biggest uh, ice cream shops in Colorado. Ice cream? For, really? for, for Latinos, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, La, La Michoacana. She has two locations, one in Greeley and I think one in Thornton or something like that. So, yeah. Uh -huh. How cool is that? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Great. Cool. So we kind of went over um, the attendance sheets. You actually got to observe a class, right? So this is a very unique style of teaching. Um, so I think the more of my classes you can observe, the better it's going to be for you. I agree. Ultimately, we need to get you some students that you can start teaching. Sure. Because I, I you know, when it, when it comes to teaching a teacher how to teach, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. there's really, I, I can't really teach you how to teach. You, you kind of have to start doing it, right? And you'll get better as you go. So at this particular point in time, Lance, I'm ready to give you some students. What, what would you say you need to see or you need to learn in order to start working with your first student? Um, and I take it, well, let me just back up and let you know that I, uh, I have communicated with, uh, I guess, one of the managers or something over at this um, Central Park okay. office location. And oh, the runway offices, right? Yeah. Yeah, run, okay, there you go. Yeah, cool. and um, I'll probably take a, a tour either this afternoon or sometime tomorrow. Nice. So if that all works out, and it sounds to me like it probably will, the pricing sounds like it's about right, you know, at least to get started. Um, you know, I'll be able to start doing in, you know, in-person classes. Uh, in the meantime, I can start taking, uh, you know, online students. As far as that goes. Yeah, for sure. Have you uh, thought about asking at like a rec center or a library in your Location. Well, you, mentioned, you mentioned the GDR. I checked out uh, the GDR rec center and their hours just aren't uh, really workable. Um, they close like at eight o'clock and you mentioned to me that the evenings are, you know, kind of an important, uh, probably the most important time slot. Um, so, you know, I could probably use the rec center to a certain extent, but, you know, as far as weekends, no, they're not open apparently uh, at all on weekends. And yeah. Yeah. What about, well, that's just, you said Green Valley Ranch. What about in Aurora? Um, no, I mean, yeah, frankly, I've just, uh, I checked out GDR right away. Uh, yeah. Sometimes uh, you got to check out a few different places, right? And so I know there's a few rec centers over in Aurora uh, in libraries too. Don't forget to, to check with the right. library. And outside of that, any other community gathering place? Um, now, frankly, David, I, I guess really in my situation, I think the community location is probably more for people who are concerned about the expense, um, the, the out-of-pocket thing. I'm not really worried about that. It's not really Okay, thing. gotcha. The, the only thing is your students will be, right? So if you imagine you're working with students, let's say you just get one student for a private one-on-one -on -one lesson, you're charging the student Fifty dollars, and then you've you've got to pay twenty five of that to the to the room rental place. Like that, that's a huge expense for you. Well, I get the impression from what you've said that like your phone rings off the hook. So it does. Yeah. My my guess is I'm not going to be stuck with one student. Hopefully not. I'm just 
calling attention to that. Like it's, sure. no, absolutely. it's a consideration, right? No, right, right, absolutely. If you can so. find a free place to host your classes, I would highly advise that. I'm sorry, say again? If you can find a free place to host your classes, <laughs> I would highly advise yeah. that. I'll, 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 I'll check out. Out. I'll check out another rec center or two I, in that room and see what I can find. Yeah, I, I rented a physical location for 10 years before the pandemic, right? right? And I gotta tell you, now that I'm just doing classes in my living room, it takes all it takes away so much of the pressure, right? Because it doesn't it doesn't matter if I just have one, you know. Then we pretty much had when we were renting the physical location we had to have classes going on all the time and they had to be full with like eight, you know, if, if we had less than four students, you end up losing money. Right. So um, that was just the business model at the, at the time. I'm just saying that because I've got a lot of experience doing this. And, and if you can find a free place to host classes, it's, it's a much better situation for you. Well, I guess, you know, I, when I look at the, uh, the runway, um, location over there i mean it looks like for my needs at least like i say at the beginning it's 400 bucks a month so that's and and does that give you like unlimited use of the it does it does 24 oh, that's that's a great deal i was just looking at because they have like hourly where you can rent a room by the hour but i'm limited to 40 hours a month with that those packages so like i said at least I, we're talking uh if it were one class a week, if I did four days. Yeah, no, that's that's a pretty good deal for, I mean, that's, yeah. Um, and if you can look around for some other, uh, you know, you just have to dig, right? But if you can, so you can kind of see the size of the office that I'm in here right now, right? And this isn't my primary space, but like if this is um, just my office, but this is big enough that I can set up a table here and I could host, you know, four or five students comfortably in this room. This is maybe a hundred square feet. This is not a very big room at all. Yeah, okay. So do you normally teach in your living room then and use like your TV as your teaching monitor? Yeah, I'm actually just using my so I have a, a really big uh, Mac iMac computer. Okay. So it's, it's got like a 30 inch monitor on it. Wow. That is a big one. Okay. Yeah, the bigger the better. The bigger the better. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a 55 inch TV that's in this location. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds like you're you've got your location set up. Um, at maybe, some point, maybe. I need. To, what's that? Potentially, maybe. But potentially, right? Um, at some point, I need to. We need to schedule a time to just go over the program, everything that's included, right? All the different presentations and yeah, exactly. evaluations and everything. Um, let me see here, Lance. So are you gonna come to my class later today in person? Um, you know what? I guess I would prefer to do tomorrow if that's possible. You have an in-person tomorrow? Sure. Okay. That'd be better for the schedule right now. Sure. I've just added you to, to the morning class and the afternoon class. So you don't have to come to every single class, but the more the more the better, I think. The times are the same. So you begin morning at 8.45 and end at 10.15. And... There's, there, the morning class is online. It's 8.45 to 10.15. Oh. And you saw today we ended at about 9.20, right? Because the other student wasn't there. So... Uh, if the other student were there, I would have kept going for the full, for at least an hour, or hour and a half. But with only one student, you tend to go a lot faster. And I don't want to leave the other student too, too far behind. So the, you always do the, the uh, online in the morning and then the afternoon is in person. That's my current schedule. Yeah. Okay. And what time does the afternoon begin? Uh, the afternoon is 1.30 to 3. 133. Okay. And uh, where are you located, David? Um, I do you want to write this down? Sure. My address is 5116. 5116. 5116. Deep Haven, one word, Deep Haven. Okay. Court. Deep Haven Court. Is that Denver or Aurora? Uh, that's Denver. Okay, great. Okay. 80239. Right. Okay. So um, I guess uh, we'll plan on doing the uh, online in the morning, 845. And then uh, I'll see you at 130 
tomorrow afternoon. Sounds great. Thank you. All right. Thank All you. Right. See ya. Take care.